at the beginning of January, I actually had the other woman show up on my doorstep. And I, you know, first I, you know, I opened the door and she's asking me where my husband is. And I'm like, who are you? I'm his girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm his wife. This is the Bad Girls Bible Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Jameson, and this is the place where I interview experts and professionals and everyone in between to teach you how to dramatically improve your relationships and have more enjoyable sex more often. And by the way, if you want to learn my most important sex tips and techniques that will bring you and your partner back arching, spine tingling, toe curling orgasms that will keep them coming back for more, you'll find them in my discreet and private newsletter. Just go to badgirlsbible.com slash newsletter, enter your name and email address, and I will send these sex tips straight to your inbox. Today, I'm talking to Lee about her marriage of 24 years, how she found out that her husband had been cheating on her, and interestingly, how him cheating on her boosted her libido due to a phenomenon called hysterical bonding. Lee, thanks so much for coming on the podcast to tell your story. Sure. So I'd love to start off with you and your background and maybe you could tell me a little bit about where you grew up and what your family life was like when you were younger. Well, I grew up in Oklahoma in the country Mm -hmm. and grew up in a small town, kind of basically daddy's girl, was very close to my dad, not as close to my mom. And of course, you know, there was also some issues that kind of arose in high school because my dad was an alcoholic. You know, things weren't really well. When I was in high school, literally, I was most of the time having to stay at friend's house just because of how bad it was, you know, in the home with my parents. Was he aggressive or angry or? Just verbally abusive. He was, you know, abusive towards my mom, verbally abusive towards me and, and my brother. And so I, a lot of times would ask to stay with a friend just so I would kind of avoid being there. So how would you describe your childhood overall? Was it happy, sad, in between? Kind of in between. I mean, I was very close to my dad. And of course, when he was sober, he was, he was a great guy. Mm -hmm. You know, when he was drunk, it was a different story. And the older that we as kids got, he was drinking more and more. And the rampages were becoming a lot more hostile. And so in my high school years, I was trying my very best to disappear just so I didn't have to be around. It's completely understandable. I don't think anyone wants to be around, you know, someone who's just angry all the time. Yeah. So how did you meet your husband then? Could you describe maybe, you know, the day you met him, how you met him? Kind of an interesting situation. I, my best friend from high school is basically, she was married to my husband's brother and Mm -hmm. she was introducing, what she was doing was inviting us over to her house at the same time in hopes that we would meet each other and like each other. And so I go over there and I'm having a conversation with, with her and just kind of hanging out and. I notice, you know, my future husband kind of keeps coming in the room and kind of looking at me and then disappearing for a little bit and coming back and looking at me. And then, you know, it was just kind of, it was kind of awkward at first, kind of like, you know, what, what's up with, you know, like who's, who's the guy that keeps popping in and like staring at me. So it kind of started there. And I mean, of course I had no idea that she was, she was trying to fix us up with one another. So did he already know you? No, he did not. He okay. had just gotten out of the military at the time. He was in Desert Storm. And so he had only been out of the military for a few months at the time that we met. Oh, okay. So, and so what age were you guys when you first met? 23. Cool. And so did you hit it off then straight away? Or was it, was it just a case of him popping up in places, just looking at you and then leaving? <laughs> No, I mean, actually, this is going to sound kind of silly, but I mean, once we started talking with one another, I mean, we were inseparable. 
I mean, we were just crazy about one another. I mean, we, we knew pretty quick that we wanted to be together for like, we knew pretty quick that, you know, we wanted to be married to one another. And why? What, what was that reason? You know, it's really hard to describe. I mean, just like I said, we were inseparable. We, you know, enjoyed each other. We wanted to spend every moment together. We couldn't imagine our time without one another. I mean, we were just crazy about one another. And so, I don't know, I guess the next natural step was, you know, talking about, you know, marrying one another. So 10 months in, we we got married. And so how did he propose? He took me out to the lake. There's this cliff on the, there's a beautiful lake nearby here. And he took me out to this a really tall rock cliff. And he got down on his knee and asked me to marry him. And did you know when he brought you out to the lake, did you suspect what he had planned? Not at all. Oh, I didn't. Nice. I mean, I mean, we had we, we were talking about it. I knew it was kind of coming, but I didn't know that that visit to the cliff was going to be him asking to marry me. So it was a nice surprise. It was a nice surprise. And did you get, did you guys then get married really soon after, or was it a long engagement or how was it? I mean, just like a month. I, I can't quite remember. I, it was probably like a month or two later. And it's kind of a funny story. Our original goal was we were going to drive to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, which is a really beautiful place to get married, by the way. We didn't plan it all that well because there ended up being like a foot of snow on the ground. So we made it part of the way there and we ended up at Bentonville County Courthouse, which is, of course, the home of Sam Walton, Mm -hmm. you know, who founded Walmart. So we ended up at Bentonville County Courthouse on a snow day. We get there and we just decide, okay, we're not going to make it to Eureka Springs. So let's just get married in the courthouse. And so we ended up having to call the, the judge was on a snow day. He gets called in and he shows up in sweats, a Walmart sweatshirt. And (laughs) I don't know, what do you call those furry Russian hats? He had one of those on. Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. (laughs) So it was almost like something you'd see on a sitcom. And of course, my husband got a little aggravated at me because it was it was a little awkward. You, you know, you have this judge show up and, you know, sweat, snow boots, sweatshirt, you know, and this furry Russian hat. And it, so it was kind of I was kind of giggling a little for sure, <laughs> just because it was just not what I was expecting. I think sometimes, though, those experiences end up maybe being more memorable and fun and then fun to retell your friends. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, he always, when he tells the story to people, he always says, yeah, did did she tell you that she laughed at me on the day that she married me? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I was giggling more at just the circumstances and the, you know, we've got like a, a foot of snow on the ground. We end up at a courthouse. And, you know, it was, it was almost like something you would see in a sitcom or, or something, you know, or a comedy. Yeah, like a romantic movie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what was the first few years of marriage like? I mean, honestly, we're, you know, busy working, going, you know, both of us were, you know, working full time, going to school full time. We had our daughter three years into our marriage. So, I mean, we were just really busy. We had a lot going on, but I felt like we were happy. We enjoyed each other when we had the time. We were just, you know, incredibly busy between working full time, going to school full time and working towards, you know, our goals Mm -hmm. to get our college degrees. Awesome. So did it continue like that then? Was there more kids? How did it keep going? We just had the one daughter. And of course, she's she's 20 now. But, you know, I mean, honestly, our first several years of, of marriage were 
I mean, I wouldn't say perfect because there, I don't think there is such a thing as perfect, but I was very happy and I felt like he was too. And did you, but did you fight a little bit or was it just over? You know, know, honestly, him and I have, you know, never been, I mean, we have minor squabbles, but we really don't argue very much at all. Awesome. It's, you know, usually, you know, maybe once a year we'll have, you know, an argument, but it's, you know, there's never really been a super major, you know, horrible argument between us. I mean, most of the time we just mesh really well with one another. Uh, Well, that sounds like a good, a good way to be. I think like that you can argue about, you know, the smaller things maybe get over quick, realize that, you know, we shouldn't be maybe arguing so much about it. We need to reach a compromise. Right. But yeah, like everything you've said so far, you kind of seem to have this blissful relationship. But you mentioned in your email that, you know, your husband cheated on you. So I'm wondering, you know, what were the first signs maybe that something wasn't right? Well, I mean, to be real honest, and and this is probably a little more information, and I just kind of feel like it's important. Sure. About 10 years ago, I was involved in a car accident, and the car accident ended up causing five neck surgeries. Whoa. I'm now a chronic pain patient, have been for 10 years. And so the last 10 years, you know, at one point they had me on like eight different pain related medications. And, you know, so I went from healthy, you know, normal working, you know, to taking pain medicine, taking antidepressants, you know, having to take a lot of medication to control the pain that I was in. My third out of five surgeries, the doctor sent me back to work with my neck broke. And so I ended up with permanent nerve damage in my neck and my shoulder So the last 10 years has been pretty hard on him and I both, honestly. Well, it certainly sounds like it. And what about taking all that pain medication? Like, did you find it addictive or anything or? You know, honestly, I mean, to be real honest, before I was a pain patient, I mean, I never took antidepressants, anti-anxiety medicine, You know, I mean, never took pain medicine. I'm not a drinker, smoker. I mean, I was clean. Mm -hmm. And, but the amount of pain that I'm in in now, if I don't take pain medicine, I'm like, I'm at like a, a 10 level pain because of the mistake that the surgeon made on my neck. So I think honestly, what really wrecked my situation was they put me on a medicine okay, and it helps with anti-depression and anti-anxiety. It also helps with pain. But the only problem is, is it totally destroys your libido and it makes it to where you can't even have an orgasm. Oh, no. Yeah, I think there's selective serotonin rebuke inhibitors. I think a reuptake inhibitors, right. SSRIs, they all do that. And I think sometimes... I'm not fully sure, but I've heard anecdotes where doctors are prescribing them and they don't tell patients that, hey, there's these side effects you should be quite wary of. My doctor never mentioned that, you know, it was going to cause that. And so for five years or so, literally, I could not, it destroyed my, you know, well, just imagine pain already kind of destroys the libido to some degree. Mm. Then you add to it, you know, a medicine that totally blocks you from being able to have an orgasm with your husband. It just, you know, and, and I can tell you my, my husband, that's something that is very important to him. Mm -hmm. That you being happy. Correct. Yeah. That just sounds like a really tough situation for both of you. It definitely has been. And I, I, you know, the conversations that we've had recently, and I wasn't trying to blame myself in the conversation, but in talking with him and just saying, you know, the last 10 years has just been like awful as far as, you know, us. I mean, we've just had, you know, 
with all the, the surgeries and pain and then, you know, medications that were interfering, all that stuff combined was just really hard, not only on me, but also on him. Sure. Oh, well, naturally, you know, I yeah. think anyone's circumstance changes and then everyone around them, obviously it affects them too, especially if it's your life partner, you know? Absolutely. So I'm guessing then at some stage your husband got tempted, I guess? I guess about 23 years into the marriage. And of course, so we're talking about over eight years into him being married to a pain patient. And, you know, I was keeping him satisfied. The problem was, you know, I think he was not happy with the fact that he wasn't able to satisfy me. The medications that I was taking was preventing that from occurring. And at some point, he put himself out there. 23 years into the marriage, he decides, you know, he's going to, I guess, kind of escape it, at least temporarily. And so he would tell me he was, and of course, I'm one of these very, I'm not a very controlling, jealous kind of female. I mean, literally, if he told me, you know, I'm going to be it with so-and-so all night, whatever, I honestly trusted him because for 23 years, I could trust him. Hmm. And so he would sometimes be gone. You know, I mean, it got to the point where he was just gone most of the time. And when he was here, I mean, I was kind of starting to suspect some things were going on. He was not acting his self. He was kind of acting colder towards me, more withdrawn. And, you know, as this was happening, I was, I was searching out ways to make him happy sexually. And also in the last couple of years, I went from taking eight medications pain related mm -hmm. to three. Oh, great. So I started kind of slowly taking my life back, but I was doing it, of course, pretty much on my own by myself with very little support, you know, from him. At the same time, I'm like looking online. I find, you know, I find you, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, Bad trying Bible. to, correct, trying to come up with ways, you know, that I can, you know, make things more, you know, adventurous and, you know, happy for him. But at that point, he was kind of not going to snap out of what he was doing. So, I mean, it's kind of sad because I was you know, literally he was getting sex every single night from me and still going out and looking elsewhere. And why is that? Why, why do you think a guy who's getting f fulfilled, I guess, and why do you think he's looking for more? Well, I mean, he claims that it was the thrill of the chase that he enjoyed going out and, you know, I guess the feel of, you know, just going out and dating and feeling wanted and that spontaneity of that. You know, a few years ago, he would oftentimes ask, you know, hey, let's go out and, you know, hey, let's go out to eat or, you know, let's go out, you know, to a movie or, mm -hmm. and I, you know, a lot of times I'd be like, oh, you know, no, you don't have to take me out. You know, we don't have to go anywhere. It's okay. And so I would kind of talk him out of it when I honestly should have just gone out with him, you know, yeah. at the time I'm kind of like, oh, you don't have to take me out. What I didn't realize was I was talking myself out of my own husband and what he wanted. Yeah, that sounds it sounds tough. It sounds like maybe there's a little bit of miscommunication of wants and needs as well. There definitely was. I mean, obviously he wanted more than just sex in the bedroom. He wanted to go out and to date one another. He wanted the spontaneity and I didn't realize how unhappy that he was. I, you know, the last few years, I would even come to him and say, you know, are you happy? I mean, I could tell something was wrong. And he would be like, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm good. I'm totally good. We're good, you know. And so I was just like, Oh, okay, you know. And sorry for cutting across you. But do you think he was saying that? Because maybe he felt guilty, that he didn't know how to you know, help you. 
and that he thought I, if I, if I just say everything's fine it's it's the best I can do right you know, I think honestly, I mean, and of course, looking back now, I honestly, you know, with the circumstances of, you know, five neck surgeries and everything that I'd been through, and I honestly just think that he was putting himself out there to, to kind of escape the situation. And, you know, he, you know, of course, he tells me now that he had no intention of ever giving me up that I'm the love of his of his life. And it's just somewhere along the way in the last 10 years, we lost one another. But do you believe that what he said? Do you believe people can be like that, that they can be with their love, the love of their lives, but also want to have, you know, sex or relationship outside of that love my life relationship? What's your, what's your thoughts on that? (laughs) I mean, I honestly, for me, I don't get that, but I'm not him. Mm -hmm. I mean, I honestly, even, even now knowing that he's cheated on me, I would never do that. But for him, obviously, you know, something, you know, was missing. And I mean, he, he mentions that, you know, of course me, you know, repeatedly turning him down um, when he wanted to go out and do things. And of course, you know, my mindset is different than his. He, he wants some spontaneity. You know, I'm, I'm like, oh, you don't have to do that. I mean, you don't have to take me out. You know, we can just stay at home and do something here. And, and so we were just on two different separate tracks. And, and of course, in my mind, I'm, you know, I, I, I knew, you know, things weren't going well. And at one point I'm, I, you know, kind of switched and said, okay, you're never taking me out. We're never doing anything together other than, you know, at bedtime, you know, and I I was trying to, at that point go, okay, I know I told you before, you know, that you don't have to take me out. Now I'm saying, please take me out. That'd be nice. And did he take you? Rarely, rarely. Like I said, he was on a very stubborn track of not swaying from what what he was doing. It literally took him realizing I have to either choose this life outside of my home, dating these random people, or I have to choose my wife. And so how how did you find out initially that he was seeing other women? I had a, at the beginning of January, I actually had the other woman show up on my doorstep. No way. Wow. And I, you know, first I, you know, I opened the door and she's asking me where my husband is. And I'm like, who are you? I'm his girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm his wife. And what did she say? uh, You know, I invited her in. I had a conversation with her. And she basically told me, I I guess she knew the previous relationship that he had had. He even dated another woman for like 11 months before that. And he'd only dated this woman for like three weeks. She started suspecting that he wasn't being totally honest with her on his marital status. And she looked online, found the address and showed up on my doorstep. Wow. I got to be honest with you. I mean... Lee, I think a lot of people would lose their mind when that happens. I they feel like, felt like grabbing a gun, my, you know. <laughs> I literally felt like my heart was going to beat out of my chest. My heart was beating like I, it literally felt like it was going to beat out of my chest. I was, and I literally at one point I said, I turned to the to her while she was here and said take a picture with me. And I took a picture of her and I together and I sent it, texted it to him to Whoa. let him know that the gig was up. Did he text back? He called and basically said, well, you know, once she leaves, I'll come home and we we can have a conversation. So I thanked her for you know, coming and telling me, you know, I mean, I was very appreciative that she at least was honest and showed up and told me what was going on because, you know, apparently he had a prior girlfriend that found out about me and 
that woman never showed up on my doorstep to let me know. So I was appreciative that at least, you know, she gave me that, that, you know, she told me what was going on. She leaves. And then, of course, he, he shows up about an hour later. And of course, we talked for hours that evening. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I mean, I, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't do anything. All I could think about was him cheating. And then when did this, uh, I guess, libido kick in, the hysterical bonding? (laughs) Honestly, literally within hours with, you know, I found out at about four in the afternoon that day. And literally by bedtime, I... And it was very confusing at first because, you know, I was so mad at him. I was so angry at him. Mm. But at the same time, my body was like, you're mine. You are mine and nobody else's. And it was such a strong, (laughs) I've not felt anything like it. It was like, you are mine you're not going anywhere. And it was kind of like this primal, my body taken over, claiming him as mine. And did that feel good in the moment? I mean, honestly, I mean, this has been going on for two months now. Yeah. And it's some of the best sex I've ever had in my life. And he would say the same, or at least that's what he's been telling me. And has it been good for you? That's what what I'm wondering. It has been very good for me. And I think it's been very good for him. We're trying to, you know, I will, I will say this. I feel like it, we have to start repairing somewhere, you know, early on in that process, I was very confused because I was like, okay, how can I feel this way? How can, you know, how can, you know, he just cheated on me. He's been cheating on me with more than one woman. And here I am, you know, having sex with him. It was very confusing. So I was like, of course, you know, nowadays you can look anything up online, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking up online trying to figure out, you know, why am I responding this way? It was very confusing. And a lot of what I read was that, this tends to go one way or the other, that either you go into hysterical bonding or there's the total opposite where you shut down and you're repulsed and you're like, get away from me. I just happened to be one of those people that, you know, I was upset at him. I was mad at him. I was, you know, all the normal feelings of just finding out that he's cheated on me. but. I pretty much was claiming him, telling him, you are mine. You're not going anywhere. You're mine. Like I said, it was very kind of primal. I've never felt anything like it before. And have you talked to anyone that that has experienced it before? Actually, no. I mean, I haven't. My husband actually has a friend that I guess several years ago, he was cheating on his wife. And several years ago, they went through hysterical bonding. And of course, I haven't talked to his wife. I have another friend that about 20 years ago found out her husband was cheating on her. And of course, the other woman shows up on her doorstep with a baby. And so, and her story was totally different. Um, She was repulsed by him. She, like for four months, she wanted you know, they, they separated. She wanted her space. She wanted her time to mourn. She was totally repulsed by, by her husband and what he had done. And so I haven't really talked with another female that has been through it. I've just kind of, you know, only the stuff I've read online where other women have talked about it online, but a lot of People just don't want to talk about it because, I mean, I mean, because the stigma is this. You have people are going, ew, that's gross. You know, your husband was cheating on you and here you are having all this sex and bonding with him, you know. And so you have a lot of judgment and stigma where people just don't 
you know, it doesn't make sense in their mind. It certainly didn't make sense in my mind. And that's why I was looking it up almost immediately because I was like, how can I be just totally heartbroken, you know, devastated and at the same time want my husband? Yeah, it is. I I totally get what you're saying. There's this, I think there's this effect when people hear a story that they're not involved in, they can see it as quite black and white. You know, oh, someone cheated on you, leave his ass, you know? And I can tell you this, almost every single person in my family and friends, when they started finding out, I mean, it almost felt like us against the world. Because nobody, nobody was telling me to, to stay with him. Nobody was supporting my decision to stay with him. Not even my daughters that found out, you know? So honestly, I mean, the other woman found my daughter and, you know, told her what happened. Mm -hmm. But I would strongly urge, you know, someone who is going through this to be very careful who they tell just because a lot of times family doesn't respond well. And a lot of times they're out of protection of you and fear for you. They want to get involved and not in a good way. So what about then the last two months with your husband? What what have you guys been talking about? And how has his behavior changed maybe? I, I'll be real honest. The first few weeks, I mean... I just had a lot of questions about where he was, who he was seeing, what he was doing, what he did with them. And it was very awkward for him because, you know, of course, I'm like, you know, asking him detailed questions about, did you have oral sex with her? You know, what kind of sex did you have with her? I mean, I I was asking all these questions and he was, of course, very uncomfortable, but he was, you know, answering the questions. It was almost like a kind of, no stone could not be unturned. I wanted, I wanted to know every bit of information that he had hidden from me. And, you know, I was satisfied with the answers, but at the same time, I was devastated at the answers. Naturally, I, d- I don't think anyone, I think it's, it's like a natural thing. You want to know what happened, but actually at the same time, you kind of don't, but you do, if that, if that yeah. makes sense. I just, I was trying to, you know, I wanted to fill in every little blank that I possibly could. I mean, I still, it's not as bad as what it was, you know, at the beginning, but literally those first few weeks, I was asking a lot of questions and it was very awkward for him. And, but, you know, he was answering them to the best of his ability. Were you able to both of you sort of begin to repair things? I mean, honestly, that's what we've been trying to do. I mean, literally, when he's not at work, we're spending a lot of time together. We're trying to, you know, he's really trying to rebuild trust and he knows it's not going to happen in a week or two months. He knows it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of time and effort that's going to have to be put into it. We just started marital counseling. He started last week. I started at the beginning of this week. So, and we start separate and eventually we'll come together in in the counseling. So he's seeing the same counselor as me, but we're, we're separate and eventually we'll come together. But the last, you know, the last couple months, I mean, I'd say the first few weeks was just a lot of talking, a lot of crying for me, Hmm. a lot of crying, a lot of, And even having family trying to butt in, friends trying to butt in and uh, literally having to kind of tune everybody out because it's just too much noise to deal with on top of just being totally devastated. It's just too much. So we've had to kind of learn to, you know, spend time together, talk with one another. And to be real honest, like I said, I'm two months into this and I mean, I've had sex two three times a day every day ever since wow and has it been enjoyable for you have you been able to orgasm absolutely it's been i mean like i said it's i mean it's kind of embarrassing honestly but at the same time like it's some of the best sex that i've ever had in my life 
And we have to start repairing somewhere. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, you know, I, I was kind of embarrassed and confused at the beginning of all this, you know, cause I didn't really understand what my body was doing. Now I kind of feel like I honestly have a, a better chance at repairing things with my husband the way they are mm -hmm. than if I was totally repulsed by him and wanted nothing to do with him. And I just totally shut him down. And so do you think are things moving forward? I do think things are moving forward. I mean, it's, you know, obviously Rome wasn't built in a day. It's going to take time. But every day that, you know, he's here and we're spending time together. And, and of course, we're doing date nights. You know, we're taking turns like, you know, last week was, you know, he planned a date night. This week will be my turn. And so we're trying to come up with, you know, spontaneous things, things we can do together, things we enjoy doing together. We're trying to rebuild. Like, to be honestly, that's great to hear. I think a lot of people in your situation, you know, might just give up on the relationship. Maybe their pride gets in their way and they just say, oh, I can't live with someone like that. It's black and white. They're out. So I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that, you know, you found a way to try to work on this. I, I honestly don't know. I can't even imagine trying to repair things with him any other way. Of course, like I said, I, I, I responded in a totally different way than what some women do. Some women are totally repulsed and they want they don't want their husband touching them. And sometimes that goes on for months. For me, it was I'm mad at you. I'm angry at you. I'm all of the above. But you're mine. You're not going anywhere. And I mean, honestly, just a very strong urge to totally dominate him as mine. And of course, he's he's totally cool with the process. I mean, he was kind of confused at the beginning. Hmm. But once I kind of figured out what was going on, and of course, I didn't until I looked it up, it was just very confusing. I had never heard of it. I had never heard of hysterical bonding and, and people just don't want to talk about it. And I can understand why there, you know, like I said, there's so much judgment for people when they're, they're not in your shoes. They're, they don't know that feeling of your husband's cheated on you. I mean, I've been with this man for a quarter of a century, 25 years that I've been with this man. That's a lot of time and life and love and memories to just throw away. And literally within hours of finding out, I, I'm totally devastated, but my body is totally in this primal mode of your mind. You're not going anywhere. It was almost kind of like marking my territory kind of thing. It's kind of, it's like I said, it's very confusing. I'd, I've never felt anything like it before. So when you say marking your territory, I'm kind of curious, do you, do you physically mark them during sex? Do you dig your nails in or give them a love bite no, or anything like that? It's more or less just wanting me all over him and him all over me kind of thing. Okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm not much of a nail scratching kind of thing. I mean, yeah, there's some love nibbles, a lot of, a lot of play, but I mean, just the urge for him to be on me and me to be all over him. I would even go so far as to say that the scent of him, the scent of me, the taste of him, the taste of me, mm -hmm. all of that has been heightened. I haven't felt anything like it before. So what advice would you have, Lee, for listeners that find themselves in a similar situation? That's kind of a hard question. It depends on if they, you know, if they want to stay. For me, I honestly feel like part of rebuilding my, my, my relationship with my husband, you know, starts in the bedroom. And honestly, 
you know, even though I'm still having to work through, you know, a lot of distrust and a lot of anger issues. And, you know, I honestly, I mean, it, it depends on the woman and what she's willing to, you know, what her choice is. For me, I, you know, I choose my 25 years and to stay because my husband has decided that he's not going anywhere. And I mean, he's been right here ever since. And, you know, we're going through counseling and we've just been, I'd be real honest. I mean, we've been dating. We've been dating one another again. We've been kind of going back to the beginning of our relationship and trying to kind of, I would almost just describe it as kind of divorcing your old marriage and saying, you know what? that wasn't working for us. Let's just start over. And literally that's what we are trying to do. We're, you know, starting over. We're, I mean, literally the first few weeks, he took me back to the the cliff where he proposed to me and he asked me to marry him all over again. He, you know, we go out on dates. We spend a lot of time together. We talk more So there's just a lot more time we're spending together. And of course, I mean, there's a lot of makeup sex in there, but there's also the talking, the dating, the, you know, my husband was missing the spontaneousness of our relationship together. And I'm trying to give that back to him while he rebuilds trust with me. Lee, I think that's a great place to leave the podcast thanks so much for coming on the show to tell your story well thank you very much and by the way if you want to learn my most important sex tips and techniques that will bring you and your partner back arching spine tingling toe curling orgasms that will keep them coming back for more you'll find them in my discreet and private newsletter just go to badgirlsbible.com slash newsletter enter your name and email address and i will send these sex tips straight to your inbox